Hello, uh, this video is going to be kind of a wrap up of our work with the SHT31 humidity sensor. If you recall, this is kind of how we uh, left off and we had tested the sensor and it was working okay. And now I want to show you how to make a few changes in the program that makes it more uh, suitable for data logging applications that are coming our way. I'm going to start by just simplifying the code a little bit. If you notice here, um, we have these error traps down here. We say if if it's not a number, uh, we want to print this error message. I'm going to remove that real quickly just to make our program a little simpler here. So it's a little easier to see what we're up to. Okay. So let's look at it now. Here again is the main loop of our program. First we sample the temperature and humidity. Then we print out the results, add a carriage return or a line feed, and then delay 1000 seconds. Now for data acquisition pro problems or programs, using delays is a very undesirable approach. That is to control the sampling rate it's really not sampling every one second because when it comes into the loop it takes it some time to read these two sensors it takes it some time to print then it delays a full second before it goes again so it's actually taking more than one second to go through the loop what we want to do is control that sampling interval very precisely using the clock inside the microprocessor not using these delay commands so let me show you how to do that. First I'm just going to get rid of this delay. And we're going to do it without a delay using another program as a model. And fortunately we have a, another program that's part of the examples called Digital Blink Without Delay. Let's open that up real quick and look at it. Blink Without Delay is very much like the LED flashing program that we used earlier, but instead of using delays now down in the main loop, it uses a, the clock. It uses The clock is referred to here in this particular timer is called millis. And so basically once it enters the loop, it samples the time, then it says if the current time minus the previous time it took the, the reading, that is if a certain amount of time has passed, if that's greater than the interval, interval, interval here represent our sampling interval, then go ahead and flash the LED. Then just sit here and cycle through the loop till again we've waste, waited a certain designated length of time, then do it again. So basically this is a good model for us. This is what we want to do. We want to read the clock, wait, sir, take some readings, wait a certain period of time, and then take another reading. So I'm just going to steal some code out of here to uh, make this happen. So let me rearrange things a little bit here so we don't have that um, blocking effect. There we go. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is copy this statement. it at the beginning of my loop. So the first thing that happens at the very top of the loop is I'm going to get the current milliseconds and put it in this variable called current millis which has been designated as an unsigned log variable. Now I want to say if a certain amount of time has passed current time minus the previous time I took a reading, if that's greater than this interval, I want to do the following. Notice I have a bracket here. That's defining what's going to happen with inside the if the if the if statement is true. If the if statement is true, then we'll do all these things to the end of the bracket. I go down here. I want to do all this stuff. Okay. 
Now the other thing that I need to do is once it's in the loop I need to reset the clock. So I put this, not really reset the clock, but read the clock saying okay this was the time once I enter the reading loop let's go ahead and take this time and put it in this other variable called previous millis. Okay and we're looking pretty good. Now there's a, some little housekeeping we have to do here. First off, this variable previous millis and interval have not been defined. Okay, we did define current millis, but we added two new variables and neither one of them are defined. So again, I'm gonna copy out of here just to make it easier and fast. I'm going to put this up here. Now when I put variables up here at the top, they're global variables. I can use them anywhere I want within the program in subroutines, wherever. And I'm going to define another variable, interval, and I'm going to make that, uh, let's, let's do five seconds. That's pretty typical for environmental measurements. Now a good thing to do at this point is see if it's going to compile. Let's see what happens. It looks like it should be okay. But let's see what happens. Okay, it compiles. Looks like it worked all right. Okay, so again what we added here is now a loop. It's gonna read the time if a certain amount of time has passed, in this case 5,000 milliseconds or 5 seconds, I'm going to read the sensors and print the results. Okay, I'm going to go up here and check, make sure I'm still connected to the Arduino, and I'm going to down or upload the data. Check the serial monitor. And there it goes. So now the temperature's warmed up a little bit. It's 23 degrees in the room with a relative humidity of 27.29 percent. And it looks like it's doing it about every five seconds. So that's great. That seemed to work just fine. Let's see if it's, let's change this to two seconds just to um, see if we can see it. Close that and re-upload. Go back to our serial monitor. And now you can see it's taking a reading every two seconds. So this looks fine. And this is much better because now you're often going to have programs where you're going to read the sensors, but then you're going to do lots and lots of calculations. Programs get very large by the end of this set of lessons. And so you want to make this all very efficient and control the timing. Uh, in the way that you uh, most desire, whether you want to read it fast, slow, and after you read the sensors, you, you don't want the um, uh, system to be stuck in that loop. You want the processor to have time to do other things. So let's just, once you have it set up like this, there's other things you can do. Let's go ahead and put our LED back on the system. So I'm going over here to the down facing camera. Let's put our LED back on here. So remember the long leg is the positive. I'm going to connect that to the number 12 pin. I've got my current limiting resistor. And then I need a big ground, another ground for that guy. You've got two ground pegs up here that are available. Use the other one. So now I've got an LED, my LED back in the system and I should be able to control that using port 12. 
Remember what we have to do to make that happen? Still some code I can copy from up here to speed things up. We have to define what pin we want to use. I want my LED pin to be 12, not 13. Then we have to set the mode of the pin and the setup command. So we define it as pin 12. We set the pin as an output pin. Let's do something really simple like when it comes at when it goes into the sample loop, let's turn the pin on. Okay. Right digital. Notice I flip flop the capital letters here. It should be digital right. Of course, all that is very important. We're going to turn that pin on as a high pin. And, oops, I forgot an I there. There we go should change colors and we need a semicolon and when it finishes with the loop the sampling loop let's turn the LED off so what we should do now is get an LED that flashes every time it collects a reading okay let's try that compiled and now it's uploading now it's taking a reading every two seconds and let's look over here ah, it's flashing every two seconds so that's a good sign that indicates that it's passing through the loop and I just wanted to show you that really quickly because a lot of the time we can use LEDs on our environmental systems to give us a visual indication of whether the system is operating properly. For example, if for some reason the program hung up and wasn't running through this loop, it would definitely stop flashing. Okay, Because a lot of the time you don't want to put an LCD display or an OLED display on your thing that's going to be out in the middle of nowhere taking environmental data. But it would be handy maybe just to have a few LEDs on there and if they're flashing or not flashing or if the red LEDs on or the green LEDs LEDs on tells you something about what's going on okay with the system. You know we're not that far from making something here that could have some utility and even with this simple program. Let's say we were running a museum and uh, we wanted to determine if um, we wanted to make sure the humidity was always between 25 and 45 percent and if for some reason the humidity well let's just say we want to keep the humidity below 45 percent so we could come down here and say if H is less than 45 okay that means things are okay then go ahead and set this pin low that is flash it right but if H happens to be greater than 45 it won't set the pin low and the pin will just stay high indicating some kind of an alarm condition Ah, but we got an error when I tried to compile it. It says H is not declared in the scope. And what's causing that problem is we have defined variables T and H down here inside this loop. It's not a global variable. So to fix that, I need to define T and H up at the top of the program and make them more global variables. So let's go up here. T and H. I'm going to make these floats. T comma H. And now it compiled. Okay. So let's upload that one. See what happens.
go to the serial monitor and indeed it looks like right now the humidity is 20 about 27 percent and the if we look over here our LED is flashing like we would expect we're within range but I'm going to breathe on the sensor now and try to get the humidity above 45 percent and we should see our LED stay on Okay, it's going up. Nope, it went over 50 there, and indeed the LED is on. So we're in some kind of an that would indicate an alarm condition. It dropped back below 45, and it starts flashing again. So you can see very simply, we could do things like that. And in fact, we could actually use the Arduino to control things like a dehumidifier, for example, to dehumidify the air. We could add stuff to the code to make it send out a text message to certain people when the dehumidifier was activated or when something got out of range. So one of the things we'll do in later examples is use this relative humidity and temperature sensor to control things like pumps and valves, fans, lights, things of that nature because that's one of the most powerful uses of uh, the Arduino and, and many of the uh, similar boards. Now one of the things while we're here let's just do something else really quickly just to see um, where we are with this. I wanted to show you that there are other libraries available to read this SHT31. I'm not going to take the time to show you here but you can actually see from how long it's taking this light to flash that this is a pretty slow reading process. That is these commands right here are taking quite a while to pull off. In fact, I measured the time earlier. I'd give you that as a giant challenge problem. Can you figure out how to use Millis to calculate how much time it takes to execute these two commands? It takes about a thousand milliseconds. So it's very slow, this particular library. I'm going to show you that others are available that might be faster. Let's look for another one. I'm going to go over here and I did a search and it turns out there's another library written by a different company called Closed Cube. And I did a search on Google and for SHT31 and library Arduino. This one came right up. And it's they have posted their code on a the repository called GitHub. And we're going to use GitHub quite a bit in this class. Here is their library with examples. And I'm going to say download the zip file and it's downloading it right now. Now I can go back to my Arduino IDE so let's go to a blank sketch. I'm going to go to sketch include library now I'm going to use add zip library. Add zip library I'm going to go out it's in my downloads folder Here it is, closed cubed library. I've downloaded it before, so there's multiple versions, but here's the last one that I downloaded. I'm going to open that. I did so. Now if I go to, to, to sketch, include library, and I look way down here. Hopefully I don't have this too low. Let me raise it up just a little bit. Now if I go to sketch, include library, and go down here now you see under contributed library closed cube SHT 3x digital that's the new library that's available to us they also included an example let's load it up and see if it works file examples closed cube there you have several examples this one's called periodic mode. That sounds most like we're trying what we're trying to find. And here you see a different program. I'm not going to go through it, but here it uses the wire library and the new closed cube library. It uh, in the setup it starts up the sensor, and actually here's the loop. And they wrote a little subroutine to actually print the data out. Let's just see if it will compile. 
it does and let's upload it let's go to the serial monitor this one actually gets the serial number of the chip and it had a little error there the first time it tried it but now it's going just fine and it's reading the humidity so there's another library that you can use and it turns out this one is extremely fast it takes about three milliseconds to take a reading so you know if we we could even read at 10 hertz let's only delay here or let's say 100 milliseconds so we should be getting something close to 10 readings a second in the setup routine and here it goes now we're really cooking and taking a lot of readings let's blow on the sensor See the humidity go up, 39, 36, 35, now it's drifting back down. So I just wanted to demonstrate that there's lots of different libraries available sometimes for different sensors and you have to pick and choose the ones that work best for you. It's not saying that one library is better than the other. Sometimes you have to look at the details to find out which one is the best choice. Obviously here if you want one that's very fast, the second library by closed cube is a better choice.